Some time ago, I broke ground on a trail I've codenamed Stone Starlet. I started out by flagging a line in the forest and then brushing it out. From there, the features started to get built at various points on the trail. Up in the grove, the first big feature would be a sizable drop called the You Can Do It drop. Just after it would be a double or a step down, followed by a berm soon after. Down in the Badlands, we built a stump jump, followed by the not too slabby rock jump. Further down the hill is a step up to wall ride. Or is it a shark fin? Whatever it is, it was a massive undertaking to build. Down in the jungle, I built a drop over an old cedar log with an optional roll down. With names suggested by you, we ended up calling it the Cant Cedar Landing Drop. All this took place over the course of 11 videos, the playlist of which you can find down below. But as the trail gets closer to completion, there are still a bunch of loose ends to clean up. Some features just don't work correctly, or there are spots in between that need some love. Or maybe there's no easy option around the harder features. For example, the step up to wall ride called Bob's Bobsled doesn't have an easy way around for riders that don't want to ride the big feature. It's this kind of connective tissue that we'll be dealing with in this video. The first thing I wanted to do was fix up the small jump before the You Can Do It drop. It was one of the first things we built on the trail and it worked all right. But the roots and the stump in the landing aren't overly confidence inspiring and you don't see them until you're actually riding on top of them. So to solve this, I spent a few hours putting in a more traditional landing. In my last video, I built the big dumb line. It's a trail around the You Can Do It drop and the step down below it. I couldn't resist taking advantage of a small rocky outcrop and turning it into a drop. But since you can't roll through this drop, I need to make it optional. So in my last video I built the trail over this rock drop and I said it would be optional, but that's not the case yet. So on the right here, I'm going to put in the ride around. Basically there's no drop there and all I have to do is clear off all this stuff and uh, we'll have a ride around. Just across the way, we've got the You Can Do It drop which also needs a small change. So the next thing I want to do has to do with the drop right behind me. So the drop itself is about seven feet vertical and about nine feet out. The only thing is, is there's a bit of a hole here, a bit of a gap, and it could pose a safety issue where if someone just went way too slow, they'd fall straight in this gap. So what I'll do is I'll just fill it with logs and then top it with dirt. And basically we'll just have like a, a level surface. It's not gonna be the place you're gonna to wanna to land, but if you do happen to land there, you're not gonna hurt yourself that badly. With some logs in place, it doesn't take long to cover them with dirt. Well, we got a little case pad filled in. Uh, hopefully nobody actually tries to land there because it's not gonna be fun, but it'll be better than uh, what it was before. You're gonna be going real slow if you manage to land on that, but uh, if you do, you'll be a little, little better off. Below the You Can Do It drop, and after the big dumb line rejoins the trail, there's a big berm with a big wheel eating hole at the bottom of it. So for safety's sake, I removed the hole while at the same time tuning up the berm. Two videos ago, out in the Badlands, I built the not too slabby rock jump using a winch and a car jack. Following the jump, I built a berm after the rock. I had actually planned to continue the line from here, but with the temperatures so low, the ground had frozen solid, halting my progress. But now, a few weeks on, things have thawed out and I can execute my original plan. We've got this little downhill section. And when you have little downhill sections, they can often become a landing. So I want to fix up this uh, little downhill bit to become a landing and I want to put like just a little lip here, a little bump and that way add a little extra fun to the trail. 
As I filled in the landing a little, the weather that halted this jump build earlier made another attempt to do so. Just ran into a little bit of weather. <laughs> oh man. That's, uh, that's the mountains for you. With my hands going numb, I nearly quit at this point. But I told myself, as I usually do, if I don't do it now, future Eric will have to do it later. Well, I finished the little kicker and it actually turned out a lot bigger than I expected it to be. I just, uh, once I get into it, I just like, oh, I can make this a little better. I can make this a little better. So what I did is I kind of dug out the area before it. So it's kind of like a, a little pump. So you can pump the backside here and then hit the lip. And then you'll be able to land in this little natural downhill here. But uh, if you're not into that, you can just roll right over it and uh, it'll work just fine for you guys too. So, uh, yeah. The next day, the weather improved quite a bit, albeit a little windy. Well, it's another day in the trail. And as you can see behind me, that's the lift and the new landing after the not too slabby jump. And uh, that means we're gonna have a lot of speed. So after the jump, we've got this corner and it's kind of flat. So I kind of want to berm it out a little. As the berm took shape, the warm temperatures would melt away the remaining snow. New berms tend to be pretty soft and they take time to settle in. In fact, they tend to shrink as they pack up and I'll likely have to go through all the berms on the trail and build them up again. The next order of business, just a little lower, is at the wall ride or the shark fin, or whatever you want to call it. There was some debate over whether this is a wall ride or a shark fin, but either way, it's too difficult for many riders to ride, and it needs an interesting ride around. As you can see, we're next to Bob's Bobsled, the wall ride, and uh, there needs to be an easy way around here. Yeah, we could just clear this out and make an easy way around, but we could also do something that will help people to do the wall ride. So basically what I want to do here is build a berm, but that also has a lip at the end of it, kind of angled like the wall ride has. And then that way people can practice on the dirt berm. And then when they got that about right, then they can hit the wall ride. I really want to create fun, inclusive lines around the big features that everybody can do. But out here in the clear cut, it takes two or three times the work to create something. With the slash left over from the logging that took place, it's basically just a giant tangled mess out here. In fact, digging on this cut occasionally uncovers a surprise or two. I just pulled this cable from logging straight out of the ground. <laughs> it's funny all the stuff you find out in these clear cuts. It's just a giant mess. With most of the branches and logs cleared out, I could start to dig out the organic duff that once made up the forest floor here. As I did so, the berm started to take shape. I didn't want to take out too much though, as it could undermine the wall ride next to it. The riding surface really needed to consist completely of non-organic dirt though. At the same time, the current landing for the wall ride was a little too far out and not steep enough. So by removing the dirt from the landing and using it for the berm, I could kill two birds with one stone. Eventually I would get carried away tuning up the landing and ended up grading much of the hill. Ultimately, the berm with the shark fin exit got shaped up and I had more or less a finished product. So I've got the berm more or less where I want it, but now I just want to clear this uh, entrance out and I just want to put just a small little lip just so whoever's riding this, you know, gets a, a little bit of the rhythm for the, for the big one. I think it'll be cool. As I remove the top layer of organic material, the mountain weather does what mountain weather does and took another turn. <laughs> this hail's kind of crazy. <laughs> Look, it's all just collecting in that berm, just falling off the wall ride and then bouncing into the berm. It's so cool. Ever changeable, the day ended with blue skies. Well, I finished the lip and I think it's going to be pretty fun. Um, and it's going to be a good way for people that don't want to do the big wall ride to be able to do a smaller version on the inside. Like the berms I created earlier, it takes a while for them to settle in. 
Too much traffic, too early, will cause unnecessary damage and more work for me, which is why the trail remains closed until completion. Yes, I've seen your comments that I need a haircut. And yes, I usually do procrastinate in this department. I view haircuts as a time suck and would rather be doing something else. But I guess as the face of this YouTube channel, I probably shouldn't be looking like such a dirtbag. Though, as a van dweller, I very much am one. Can you brush the hair off me a little bit if you can? <laughs> <laughs> The fun for you? Yes. Well, we're back at Bob's Bobsled and we've got one more tiny little job to do. And that has to do with the lip onto the bobsled. As you can see, the, the dirt doesn't come up much higher than the, the edge of the wood here. So I don't know, maybe we'll add a two or three inches to that and just uh, make it make it a little easier to pop onto the onto the ball ride. And as we compress 40 minutes into a few seconds, we've got an upgraded lip. Well, I've piled a little more dirt on there. Should be good to go. As you can see, I don't know, maybe I added like uh, five inches, I think. <laughs> I'm a little nervous to, to hit this again because it's been uh, almost half a year because uh, I was gone last summer and then I broke my uh, wrist. And I haven't hit it since. Okay, coming. Now that I've completed all these changes and upgrades to the trail, it all needs to be tested out. The first jump at the top of the trail now has a nicer landing. And though I wouldn't recommend using it, the You Can Do It drop now has a case pad instead of the pit that existed before it. The new rock drop now has a ride around while still being droppable. The berm after all of this is now tuned up and free of wheel swallowing holes. The new jump in the Badlands adds a bit of extra fun to the trail and the berm right after keeps you from flying over the edge. The new mini shark fin next to the big one is working great as well. And the enlarged lip for the shark fin. Ah, just some jitters. I'll get it next time for sure. Ah, uh, third time's a charm? a bit of anxiety hitting this again. I hadn't ridden it since we built it last June, and well, the curse of the step up came and bit me again. Yuka, the fearless rider that she is, gave it a try as well. <laughs> he cased it. <laughs> but did not inspire confidence either. Good job. <laughs> How was I? Good try. But they didn't have enough speed yet. No. So, I watched some old GoPro footage of me hitting it last summer to help with my confidence. The next day, Yuka and I returned, and I managed to pop up onto it. And then, I gave it the complete go. Now riders have the option to warm up in the smaller shark fin to get the feeling before trying the bigger one. With all these changes, the trail is nearing completion. The biggest obstacle now is the mud pit after Bob's bobsled. I've got a plan for this section though, and I think most of you will be stoked on it. So, be sure to hit subscribe to see how I solve this in a future video. But, as always, thanks for watching, and stay gnarly.